Hello everyone. This video will be a quick down and dirty guide to binding custom controls in Star Citizen. In other videos, we will cover how to choose which controllers to use and considerations for optimum key binding layouts. Configuring your controls is relatively easy. We recommend going to Arena Commander, Single Player, Free Flight to rebind controls so that you can easily test them. Once in Free Flight, hit Escape, then Options. Two menu items are of interest to us here. Controls and key bindings. Under controls, you can select which device you are modifying in the lower right corner. If you are customizing your joystick, for instance, you'll want to click the right arrow until it appears. If you have multiple joysticks, an easy way to figure out how they are numbered is to hit the tilde key, then type I and hit tab. The command will autofill to I dump device information. Hit enter and you'll be able to see what order your joysticks are in. Note that the numbers won't match up because the game internally considers joystick number one to be joystick zero, but the order should be correct for joystick one, two, three, and four. Once you have the device you want to modify selected, you'll see a number of options. The top options are all inversion settings. These will simply invert the axes for various control mappings. For example, if you had an issue where you bound longitudinal strafe to your device's y-axis, but when you push the device forward it would strafe you backwards, you could invert longitudinal strafe, which many players need to do depending on their device, which would reverse the behavior and cause the mapping to function as you intend. The next section is titled Sensitivity, but this term is actually slightly misleading. When you alter sensitivity, you actually do not change the overall sensitivity of the device. Saturation does that and we'll cover it momentarily. What sensitivity does is put your device's sensitivity on a non-linear curve. Essentially, this would make the controller more precise when it is closer to the center, at the expense of making it less precise toward the extremes. In a way, it does alter sensitivity, not overall, but over the range of the device's motion. Most players choose sensitivity values between 1.3 and 1.6, though some choose higher values or even custom curves. These values are very dependent on user preference and there is no right answer. For now, we recommend choosing a conservative value of 1.3 and moving on to dead zones. Dead zones are the portions of axis in the center that register as zero control input. This is mostly purposed with preventing drift when you're attempting to center your device, but it trades precision and predictability near the center of the axis to do so. The lower this number, the better for precise flying and aiming. We recommend setting this value to 0.0, .0 initially and raising it in 0 0.01 increments only if your pitch slash yaw, or whatever the device is bound to, drifts without you making an input. Stop raising this value as soon as your device stops drifting. Saturation alters the overall sensitivity of a device. Lowering the saturation will increase the sensitivity of the device. For example, a saturation of 0 0.50 will make it so that having 50% control deflection will result in 100% input to the game. So if you had strafe on such an axis, moving your controller physically halfway to the extreme would result in full strafe in that direction. Lowering the saturation of a device trades precision for more responsive control inputs. This is similar to raising the DPI on a mouse. The movements will be jerkier and less precise until you get some practice, but you will be able to make changes much quicker because your device will have less distance that it needs to physically move to make the adjustment. Even shaving fractions of seconds off control adjustments can add up and make a big difference. Additionally, adjusting the saturation to say 0.9 will add a 10% dead zone on the extremes of the axis. This can be advantageous in some setups, such as on a strafe stick, because it gives some slop at the extremes that will help you stay at full strafe even if you accidentally back off the control pressure a bit. But it depends on your device whether this is necessary. For now, we recommend leaving this option between 0.9 and 1.0 and possibly lowering it further as desired but only after a significant amount of practice. Changing key bindings for various commands is straightforward. Click Key Bindings in the upper right corner of the Options menu. In the lower left corner, second from the left, click Advanced Controls Customization. In the lower right corner, click whether you'd like to modify keyboard, gamepad, or joystick bindings. You'll see all the key bindings available organized by category. 
Expand out the category of your choosing. Single clicking will select a key binding. Double clicking will allow you to rebind by moving or pressing whatever control you would like bound to that action. Right clicking will remove the binding. Clicking control prof profiles, then export control settings will allow you to save your key bindings and the same menu will allow you to reload them as well. Remember to copy and save your binding profile somewhere other than the user folder, Star Citizen. This is just scratching the surface of what's possible when it comes to control setups though. See the other videos in the pre-flight section of the LIS website to learn more. Hope you got something out of this, and remember to fly safe.